Now, if you've ever wanted to mount a TV onto the wall, you'll know that you'll have to use a wall bracket and this can push the TV out by quite a lot and um, it tends to make the TV look quite imposing and this one in particular just takes over the room and it's the first thing that you notice when you come in. So what I want to do in this video is see whether I can make a fake wallpaper TV that appears to be flush with the wall and uh, it's going to be the same size as this, this is 42 inches, um, but hopefully it will be far less noticeable um, but still provide a decent viewing experience. Now um, it's all going to be on a tight budget so hopefully you'll be able to apply what I do here to any setups that you might want to do, um, but other than that let's get going and I hope you enjoy it. So after looking around local adverts, I found a used 42 inch TV. It didn't come with a stand, but that's okay as I'm going to be mounting it onto a wall. It's also full HD with a surprisingly decent picture quality, which is great as it only cost 80 pounds. Now the TV itself is about five centimeters deep on its own, but as the connectors are straight on the back, they add another five centimeters, making for a total of 10 centimeters of thickness. That's hardly thin. So what I want to do is strip the TV down to make it as thin as possible. So after undoing several screws, the back can be pulled away and then the bezel unclipped and removed, leaving me with the panel on its own with no outer casing. On the back of the panel are mounted several circuit boards and in an effort to allow full access to the inputs and to reduce the overall thickness of the TV, I've removed both the signal board and the power board for mounting elsewhere in just a sec. This means that the panel itself can be mounted directly to a large fiberboard sheet with practically no gap at the back, which in turn can be screwed to the wall itself. The two circuit boards can now be mounted safely underneath and plugged back into the TV. Now I want this setup to be completely self-contained, including having a DVD player built in. Unfortunately, even the smallest one I could find was still too thick, so I stripped it down to its bare components, which are actually surprisingly basic and I was honestly expecting there to be a little bit more inside this thing. Anyway, after extending the playback buttons to a separate rough button strip, I could then mount all of these bits underneath the TV and plug it all in. Now you may notice this small display down here, and that's for a special hack that overrides the backlight flicker frequency to synchronise it with the frame rate, which I'll go into more detail about in just a bit. Now all this is hooked up to a power cable that discreetly runs along the ceiling edge to a wall socket. I then added some chambers for the speakers. Now these chambers had some sponge stuck around them to make a proper seal and improve the overall sound, which ended up working really well and is a step up above how the TV sounded originally due to less resonance. So with all that done, it's finally time to add the front panel to cover all of this up. Again, I used some fiberboard for this, to the back of which the speakers themselves have been mounted. Once in position, this whole panel could simply be screwed in place. Now, at this point, I realized that the drive used in the DVD player actually wasn't designed to be used vertically, so discs would just fall out before the tray could close. To fix this, I made some little supports with Sugru, which hold onto the discs well and prevents them from falling out. So with that, the whole thing could be painted, which neatened things up nicely. Now, I've actually managed to retain full access to the signal inputs underneath this cover if I ever need to plug something extra in, and I've left some holes for the infrared receivers so that all of the remotes still work. Even the TV's physical buttons remain accessible as I've stuck them to the side here. Now the very final thing to do is add something to cover the panel's metallic bezel. What I'm going to use for this is kitchen worktop edging, which I simply stuck in place, finishing off the look nicely. So was all this worth it? Well the original requirement was to make the TV have less of a presence in the room, 
by making the whole thing significantly thinner, I do personally think that this has been achieved. And it's helped along a lot by the fake wall that surrounds it, because it makes the front of the TV flush with what appears to be the wall, and that goes a long way to mimicking one of those super expensive OLED wallpaper TVs. And it's actually, you know, it works really well in person. Now, before I sign off, I'd just like to cover the frame rate override feature I mentioned earlier. So this hack came about when I noticed that one of the circuit boards had a wire labelled as dimmer, which got me excited as it turned out to be used for the pulse width modulation signal, which sets the backlight brightness by rapidly turning it on or off depending on whether a small voltage is applied to this connection. With voltage, the backlight turns on, and without it, it turns off. And this happens hundreds of times a second, depending on the brightness setting on the TV. This flickering happens too rapidly to see with your eyes, so instead it's perceived as lower brightness. So, in order to manually manipulate this signal, I bought a tiny little pulse width modulation controller, which allows you to set how many times it generates a pulse per second, and also the duration of each pulse. I then wired this up to the dimmer connection and added a switch that allowed me to go between the TV's original brightness signal and this new override signal. Now before I show you why I bothered with this, I need to give you a quick lesson on how your eyes perceive motion on a screen. Now the motion we see on screens is made up of a lot of still images that are shown in rapid succession. When LCD panels change between these images, they hold each image on screen until it's time for the next one, where it instantly updates it and then holds it again. This happens up to 60 times a second. Now, because of the way our eyes work, when tracking moving objects across a screen, it tends to get blurred out because your eye is physically moving, but each image is stationary. One way to get around this is by showing more images per second, which is what a lot of modern TVs attempt with some sort of motion smoothing feature, which insert fake guest frames um, in between the real ones. Uh, but this can give content like films a sort of soap opera effect because it can look overly fluid. Now, interestingly, when you instead just rapidly flash each frame of video, rather than keeping it on screen until it's time for the next one to show, it keeps the image in your vision for a small period of time due to persistence of vision in your eyes. This completely eliminates all motion blur because your brain literally assumes what happens between each flickered frame. And your eye can't blur it out because there's nothing there to blur out because it's gone dark. As I can now manually control the backlight, I can set it to strobe at the same frame rate as whatever video I'm watching, meaning that each frame is shown just once as a brief flash. Obviously this is much dimmer, so is only usable in dark conditions, but the effect on motion is astounding, because not only is motion blur eliminated, so much so that a cursor moving rapidly across the screen now looks just as clear as if it was stationary, but in films, everything suddenly becomes fluid and smooth, which is down to your brain literally assuming that it's missed something and fills it in for you, just like when you blink. It's really weird and has to be observed properly to be understood, and while I won't be using this override often, it was definitely worth experimenting with for the sake of learning. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, it's definitely been a fun one for me to make, and I think the final result has worked beautifully. Right, so uh, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. And other than that, I'm Matt, you've been watching DIY Perks, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye for now.